What's up guys? Um, looks like audio is rolling. Welcome to the Gay Sacred Lounge. As you know, my name is Alashina and today we are going to talk about the three confidence killers. So what's amazing is like, I can't believe how nervous I was and am to get on this call today, to get on here and, and um, speak to you all. So I'm just naming it so I can just freaking like release it. Like, woo. I know it's good because it's, 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 it's the transmission that needs to come through to you all. So um, pull, up your, pull up your chair. Um, you can take some notes if you want. So sometimes when I do these, I'll do those, do them a little bit more business oriented where I'll like be in front of the laptop and I'll, I'll put captions and things. So, but today we're not gonna do captions. So I'm gonna talk about the three confidence killers and uh, um, you just have to take notes. So my laptop's up there. I'm just gonna jump on to our group so I can see comments that you guys might be, um, that you guys might be putting in. So I can see the comments, here we go. Will I be able to see the show later, Ray says. Can I have to see it because of work? Yeah, L lives are um, forever categorized, forever archived. So I want, before we begin, I just want everyone to just like, take a moment to get present in your body. All right, so just take a breath. All right, so we're gonna do a little gay spirit invocation here. So just take a breath into your body and just exhaling whatever is here. Just breathing. I want you to connect down to your perineum. I want you to connect into your genitals. Feel your cock, feel your perineum, feel your feet, feel the energy slow, flowing out of your feet to the earth. And I just want you to ground, okay? Just ground. If you've been on a laptop or doing other things, you're probably not like super grounded. You're up in this space. So when we gather, I just want us to be grounded. Okay. I'm also grounding myself right now <laughs> so I can be more present and really channel for you. So just taking another breath now, putting maybe a hand on the heart or both hands on the heart and slowing the mind down and just really coming into your heart, coming into your queer heart, your gay heart, just coming into your spirit and just kind of just holding some compassion for yourself. Just holding some compassion for who you are, for everything that you've been through and for this internal call to grow and to take this journey, all right? So just feeling that tenderness, feeling your soul, feeling your spirit, feeling your sexuality. And, and the clients I work with, we do a lot of like kind of these guided things where I really channel their sexual energy through their body, which can be really healing. So I'll just give you a little taste for a minute. So just breathe down into your solar plexus and just connect to your sexual energy. It's not about connecting to an erection, it's just connecting to your sexual energy. So just feel that for a moment. And then just breathe that through your body. Just like, just breathe that queerness, that gayness, just breathe that sexuality, sensuality, fire, prana through your body. Just down to your feet, just up to your shoulders, breathing it. And just allowing yourself to be who you are. Just letting your spirit and your power expand. Okay? Take another breath. Let that expand. Feeling your power, feeling your sexuality. And we're going to dive in. So I'm going to need my notes over here. Just want to make sure we're live. It says, it says we're live, right? You guys are seeing us over here? Okay, look, I can see myself. Okay, cool. All right, so... Um, what's up, buddy? What's up, Greg? Um, yeah, saying hi to Greg Goebel. He runs another amazing men's group. So today we're talking about the three confidence killers. So one thing you're going to learn about me is I don't sugarcoat shit and I don't kind of tell you to be your best self. I don't tell you to like be you. I don't tell you this like the, the things that I am going to arm you with are based on my own experience, are based on what I've learned from my clients. And they're very energetic in the sense that they're very experiential. Okay, so you know, if you know anything about me, I've done a lot of work with shamans and energy healers and transformational coaches. And so much of what this is about is the energetics of what's going on in the body. You know, I've taught yoga for years. So I'm very much into the mind, body, spirit connection. So um, here we go with the number one. The number one confidence killer is projecting your energy outside of yourself. Okay, so number one, and I'll put a summary of these later. 
um, in, the, in the comments. Number one, it's projecting your energy outside of yourself. What the hell does that mean, Alish? <laughs> okay, so again, so I draw you into this little bit of experience of being in your body. What I'm going to illustrate for you through experience is that a lot of times when you're not in your power, you're actually projecting you outside of you, which means that all the thoughts and concerns is up in here and being projected outside into the world. Basically, you're wrapped up in this worry state, this worry consciousness, this fear consciousness of what do other people think of me? And instead, you're not actually being rooted in your body. So I want you to imagine yourself out in public. I want you to imagine yourself being like out somewhere, like out in public somewhere, somewhere where it's okay to be gay and uh, people are questioning, you got all kinds of people, right? Right? Now, maybe, um, maybe you're like super confident and probably I don't know why you'd be on this call, but <laughs> most of us tend to, and I've noticed this for a long time, when I'm kind of out in public, I, I'm disconnected from my sexuality and I'm projecting my care, I'm like basically projecting my focus of my energy outside of myself. And when I'm doing that, I'm dissociating from my sexuality and I'm also giving my power away. So really another way to say number one of projecting your energy outside of yourself is giving your power away. All right, so um, that's kind of like a blanket term, like I'm giving my power away. Well, what the hell does that mean? How do I get my power back? Well, I'm teaching the energetics. You're drawing the power back inside. So imagine yourself, you're out in public and you're kind of like looking around, you're feeling around, you're worried, like maybe you're sitting with someone having coffee and maybe it's a gay person and you're wondering, what do other people think of me? Draw that energy back inside, right down to your belly button, right? You wanna draw that energy into your belly button and you wanna just create a sense of safety for yourself, right? And as you create that sense of safety, you allow that to radiate out, to actually just kind of fill up maybe a 12 to 24 inches outside of you. So you're actually, um, you're actually creating a field your arc field, you're actually strengthening that by creating a sense of safety with them. There's a lot of other nuances to that, but I won't get into um, on this specific call. But that's the number one confidence killer is when we're actually projecting our energy outside of ourselves and we're giving our power away. Because if you're actually caring what other people think, you're disowning, you're disconnecting, you're dissociating from your truth. Right? So it doesn't mean that we need to be super flamboyant wherever we go. It just means allowing yourself to feel safe within. Right? And you can be in kind of your stoic masculine, you can be in your fluid feminine, still feel safe and still feel like you're kind of, that you feel comfortable in your environment. Right? And this happens a lot when you're with family members, like if you're around family members who are kind of weird around who you are um, or not comfortable, like notice how much you're projecting that energy and giving that power to them instead of just being in your truth. Right? So that's number one confidence killer. And the antidote is to draw that energy back inside so that you feel safe. All right, so I'm gonna keep an eye for questions so you can post your questions below. I'm gonna move on to number two now. All right, so number two confidence killer is this unconscious belief that you are taboo. And so one of the main things that I'm doing in my group, one of the main things that I do in my programs uh, is helping people basically dismantle this taboo consciousness. A lot of gay men don't realize that we are operating from this taboo consciousness, that we are operating in the sense that we feel like we need to fit in. And a lot of it really, really runs unconscious. So you're kind of like unconsciously running around thinking, I am a taboo individual, like I've got to try to fit in to this, will people like me, all of this stuff. But the truth is, <laughs> you know, you're not taboo, right? You're not taboo. Um, the, antidote to, uh, the antidote to unconsciously believing that you're a taboo is to practice affirming your divinity. So this really roots back to what I was talking about in number one, like really coming back into that um, sense of safety within in your spirit and just you know, really affirming your divinity. So if you don't understand or have a connection to your divinity, that's something that you can develop. But I'm really, really fierce about you understanding that you are a divine being in a body. There is nothing at all taboo about you. And we have, a, you know, a, there's still unconscious beliefs. There's layers and layers. And then when we get to anal sex or we get to like actually engaging in sex, there's other things that can come up. But what I'm offering you is the simplicity that you can then apply to other areas where it may come up. Right? So just becoming aware of, am I, just test this, like when I'm out in public, am I right now believing that I'm taboo? Is there a part of me that's actually thinking I'm taboo. And then what you do as the antidote is that you just come back inside, 
connect your heart, connect your sexuality, and you can just say something loving to yourself, like, I'm divine, like, this is how my creator made me, I am amazing, like, this is, I am divine being. It's okay if people don't understand, and I'm not trying to cr start a crusade around getting other people, like, to try to understand that we're these divine beings. It's about us saying this for ourselves and living that from, our, from whatever our truth is. Okay, so number two con uh, confidence killers is unconscious belief that you're taboo. I'm going to check on the questions to see kind of what's coming up here. To see if there's anything coming up. Look in here. All right, I don't see anything, but I'll keep an eye. Five comments. Here they are. Come on. <laughs> All right, doesn't want to pull up right now. So we're going to go to confidence killer number three. Confidence killer. Confidence killers. Uh, they're there. All right. So confidence killer number three. This is my absolute favorite one. My absolute one that I, I teach a lot in my like masterclass trainings, and it's like one of the big ones I, I work with with men, is the nice guy syndrome. So confidence killer number three is called the nice guy syndrome. There's actually been books written about this. There's some amazing uh, male gay, uh, male psychologists that have written about this. This isn't a gay issue. This is. This is mostly a male issue. It's actually an everyone issue. But um, so the nice guy syndrome is basically it describes how we mask our feelings and we basically put on this new age nice guy stuff. So this happens a lot specifically like in not not gay communities specifically, but, you know, like my audience who I'm speaking to are gay spiritual men, gay awakening men, like gay, you know, these kind of men, you know, we get it. Um, a lot of times what happens, we get on this new age path and we kind of get into different new age philosophies and like meditation and we end up dissociating from our true feelings. And that process creates the nice guy syndrome. Basically, there's this history of denying your truth, which can include anger, which can include rage, which can include like really standing in your boundaries and really needing to honor your truth. And that might be messy how you need to, to, to honor your truth, you know, like we're human beings. There's sometimes there's no pretty way to tell someone that you need to set a very clear boundary. Um, so the nice guy syndrome um, impacts a lot of gay men because we have this beautiful, beautiful heart inside, you know, and like at the core of us, we're, we're like, we're, you know, we are gay. That's what gay means, you know, gay means like basically, you know, happiness and joy. So um, because of this sense of like, I need to be gay, we tend to kind of, uh, we put on these false masks. And because we've grown up in a straight man's world, because we've been abandoned, we've been rejected, we've been, you know, misunderstood, we tend to mask all those feelings because we want to be in our happy state all the time. And this can create the nice guy syndrome. The problem is that <laughs> um, this can really crush your relationships. Like if you ever expect to get into a relationship where you can maintain trust, you have to be able to express your true feelings. The reason I'm bringing this up is because I'm presenting this path for you to sacred partnership and you can't be in a deep, intimate, sacred partnership if you can't fully express your feelings, to be able to look in the face of someone you love and really express how in agony you are or how angry you are at them or just how you feel in that moment. Like We sit in and we tune into Netflix so we can watch people express feelings like this, but the truth is we need to do that for ourselves. You know live in your own drama like this is like we are human beings just express that feeling it's just energy when you express it when you are able to stand in your truth no matter how messy it is your partner your friends your relationships your lovers will respect you more and they will trust you more because they know they can count on you to express your truth right so we're going to get a lot into other trainings around intimacy and trust and what's happened when you've had a series of relationships that are like, you know, you've, you've had heartbreak and had mistrust and cheating and things like that. Well, so we're going to talk about that kind of in other modules, but this is so important because this crushes your confidence. Basically, if you're being the nice guy, you're pushing down your power. You're pushing, pushing down your sexuality, you're pushing down your anger, and those are forces for change, right? Your sexuality, your anger, your rage, that's your passion to go after the career that you want, to go after the man that you want, to go after anything that you want in your life. These are all things, that, these are sources of power, sources of energy that you need to channel into your life. And if you're denying your feelings, if you're denying how you truly feel, then you're not in touch with your intuition and people aren't going to trust you. So you're not going to be able to trust yourself to get into healthy relationships, right? So the antidote to number three, uh, you know, is feel your feelings. Not just feel your feelings, but express your feelings. 
You know, have practices to get in touch with your feelings. There's a reason I work out. There's a reason I do yoga. There's a reason I dance. You know, dance before I got on this call because I had all this like nervous energy. And I was like, I can't get on here and be present for you if I have all this, this energy. I had to just like be with myself. Um, and really a, another big part of this is really embracing fluidity. So all gay men, you know, present themselves differently. You know, we're, what, what was our superpower is our masculine and our feminine, right? But we don't always present as masculine. We don't always present as feminine. Um, and some men have really kind of disconnected from their fluid nature in the sense of being able to be fluid in their masculine and being able to be fluid in their feminine and being able to be in their divine child when that's present. And if you repress that, basically you're being the nice guy. You're trying to be one, you know, version. And that's, that's really false masculinity. You know, that's, that's a big thing that we deal with is like putting on this false mask of like who I'm supposed to be in the world, <laughs> you know, and that doesn't get us anywhere. You know, ultimately we're just fooling ourselves. So one thing is really having embodied practices to re to reconnect to your fluidity and to really embrace like is am i just you know am, am i wanting to come forward as feminine in this moment is it is it like compassion that's coming forward is it sensitivity and vulnerability you know is that what's coming forward or do I need to come through and get really clear with you with my masculine? Do I need to come through and set some boundaries for us? Do I need to come through and tell you exactly the steps that we need to do? See, that's the masculine energy. So you can flip between those two. See, a very integrated gay man can flip and move fluidly between his feminine and his masculine and use them as sources of power, right? So part of the reason I, you know, I have this like HD setup and all of this is because I want you to be able to see how I'm embodying this energy. I okay, adjust my boobs here. Um, I want you to just be able to see how I'm embodying and expressing this energy. It's taken me a long time to harvest this. You guys don't understand. Like I was a straight man for 33 years and then my whole life blew up and started, I had the sexual awakening, was in a marriage, like all, everything blew up and I was very rigid. I had like super false masculinity. I've dismantled Basically, I've dismantled a straight man within me to become who I am. It's been the hardest, most agonizing thing I've ever been through. You know, like, um, you know how su um, uh, superheroes and di different people from like comics and things, they go through this initiation process to become who they are, whether they're struck by a bolt of lightning or they have to like some nuclear reaction or they have to like go un undergo like a lot of intense training and transformation and death and rebirth. Like, that's what I've been through in the past seven years to get here, to be able to deliver this embodied wisdom to you. So soak it in, watch these things over and over if you want. Um, you know, I'll be talking about more trainings, I'll be talking about my programs and things, but right now I'm just trying to get you to uh, really connect to the wisdom that's coming through me, that my purpose and why I'm here. Um, and of course, if you wanna talk about working together, we can, but I'm not, I just want to really start this conversation of us being in this container together. And of course there will be opportunities to work with me. I work with men. I work with men for like the past four plus years. So anyway, um, let me check the Q and A or the, let me check the, the comments to see if anyone is, has any questions. Number two, com uh, confidence killers. Yeah. Oh my God. Hearing myself talk. Can we, okay. All right, Greg. Being authentic is essential, which includes all aspects of who we are. Claiming anger for a great point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, authentic is really, really important. But what I found is a lot of people like really want that, but they don't really know the path to that. Um, yeah, like really knowing the path to like what is your authentic self, and that's a path of discovery. Honestly, it's a path of discovery. Like, what is authentic to me? Um, like, you, this is a, sometimes we don't really get to know who we are until later in life. I just turned forty years old. I haven't, I'm still discovering my most authentic self, but I feel the most authentic in my life now than I ever have because of all these things that I'm presenting and teaching to you. So um, I think that's really all I have for you today. Um, again, lots of great wisdom. You can watch it again. Um, and then, so think about, I've got a schedule lined up of things that I wanna present, you know, things like this. Um, but if there are things that are bugging you that's specific in your life, um, drop a message. You know, you can just drop it anywhere in the Facebook or message me privately and say, can you do something on this or I'm struggling with this. Um, so Friday, we're going to do a live Q&A. So it could be five minutes, it could be 50 minutes. So it depends who being, how many people show up to ask questions and things like that. So thank you for being here. And um, I just wanted to honor this space as sacred and uh, this is our place. So this, this is, you know, you have to participate. So, you know, kind of sitting back and watching it, thank you. 
But the next stage is really just kind of engaging and letting me know like, you know, where do you need help or kind of suggesting any feedback too is, is greatly appreciated. So much love to you and I will see you on Friday, but we'll also, you know, I'll be in the group a lot. So, all right, bye.